War is never the solution to disagreements as it directly or indirectly affects all parties involved. The ongoing war in Sudan comes to mind. Some Nigerian students airlifted from the war-torn Sudan have shared their experiences. Some female students stated that they were sexually harassed and became so broke that they started picking things from shops and ran away. One of such female students told newsmen on the arrival at the Namdi Aziko International Airport, Abuja, that they faced humiliation and slept in the open. A male student noted that the situation was so bad that they even had to pay money before they were allowed to urinate. Sikian, bad situation. Yes, bad situation. Terrible. Um, yes, terrible. Um, but we have to, we shouldn't forget something. It was a worse situation. And other worse situation, anything, yes, can, anything happen. can happen. Anyway. It is only anybody that um, is involved or within the crossfire will understand. And most especially, you look at it from the point that, first and foremost, most of them should be grateful that they were able to make it out of Sudan alive. Lives were lost. That, to me, is the greatest part. It is just a turning curve for them. But we should also ask ourselves, do we, as a people and as a government, drop the ball when it comes to ameliorating and taking care of the basic needs of the citizens, as other countries did? Nigeria is not the only country that lifted uh, its people from Sudan. US, I saw those of South Africa when they returned. And the kind of um, heroic and um, this thing that they were given, and how they were channeled. I saw those that uh, returned, that were picked um, with the sheep, and returned to Saudi Arabia. I saw them. I saw those of other countries. Let us even talk of Africa. They returned, some of them returned in so much dignity. But ours was a more than harrowing experience that even some of the students or people realized that, in fact, the experience that they had crossing over from Sudan was more than they could have had while they were in Sudan. One, some of them were stuck in the desert for some days because of the disagreement between our government and the drivers that were hired to ferry them to Egypt. You remember that, that, that yeah. vividly? Yeah. They were in the, in the cold in the desert. Then on getting to Egypt, those yeah, that tried to rest, they were traumatized, really and they were not able to cross into Egypt for days. Hmm. They were at a point. That means that for the days they were at that point, they did not even have their bath. Some of them didn't eat. They were hungry. They were not clothed, and the rest of them. It took a phone call from our president to the president of Egypt for him to be able to give some kind of uh, leave for us to be able to pass. But so many other citizens of other countries were allowed to pass through that border. And the question you ask yourself, what is the problem? What is the problem with being a Nigerian? Mm. What is the problem with carrying that green card mm. or green passport? It's not only, it, it, even on, so under conventional, you, know. you, you travel. I've said it time and time on this program, some of the hiring experience, some of us has, just carry that green passport. Somebody as much as the uh, Lorette, uh, um, Noble Lorette, um, no, which was in car, was in har harassed, embarrassed at that level. That the point you remember vividly when he said he would never travel, was it to US or something again? So that is the point. I think it's high time. I still believe, as a student of um, international politics, I don't think we are playing politics the way it should be. We are not paying we are not paying international politics. There was a time where Nigeria was seen, at least within the African nation, as a, 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 a rising point to which other African countries look up for. That is where we got the Big Brother slogan. But now, every African country, I'm just talking of Africa now, we look at Nigeria straight in the eyes and they will not blink. We've had issues in South Africa, we had issues in Ghana, we had issues in so many other African countries that they look at Nigerians, I don't know why. And that is what we need. So, but good enough, our people are being lifted. We are looking at lifting about 5,000 students. And I will continue to say that. We don't have only 5,000 students in Sudan. We have millions and millions of... I said it the last time I was here. Somebody was trying to do this, but that is a fact. Go and do your research. We have millions and millions of Nigerians. So it is not just lifting. Lifting 5,000 students is not solving our problem. 
The problem is how do we be able to move most of our country people, countrymen and women who find themselves in the theater of war now, gotcha. and be able to make sure that they come back home yeah. safely. What do you think we, it was difficult for us to, uh, to navigate through Egypt? Well, I, um, I think um, the Ministry of officials did not uh, do their own work very well, you know, in terms of communication. I think it was just a communication breakdown because it's, it's simple. When once there's a war situation, it is the Ministry of officials that will make sure that they move immediately. We have an embassy in Egypt. So what because was the, the picture of the city and painted now is just like as if yes, of course. Uh, because even when the thing started, us. even yeah. when the thing started, that is when communication would have started. We have Egypt, we have Ethiopia, we have Chad. We have Chad around Sudan. We even have Sudan, Sudan. Even Sudan, Sudan, which is not at war. Which is not at war. We could have just moved out. So we could have just Sudan. said, okay, fine. How do we talk to these people in case? Mm -hmm. In first week, second week, when the thing was getting out of hand, he would have started talking to all the ambassadors there, talk to the government that is involved, and then begin to see the easiest routes for them. So how were Americans, how, how did they move their citizens out? We, we just make sure that when things are getting out of hand, we will now begin to say, oh, now everybody wants to take praises for bringing people back. It is not you that should have done that earlier. We should have done it earlier. Go to Egypt. If we need the minister to go to Egypt, the minister should have gone and not wait for Abike Dabiri to be doing the talking and getting the bashing. We have a minister. He should have been the one. In fact, every day, he should have been briefing Nigerians on how or the effort they are making to bring Nigerians back and the effort that they have made with the Egyptians. Not traveling when people travel to Egypt. At the end of the day, they are facing this. Paying five... Fifty dollars for you to, to urinate. I, it's, it's some of the um, sound bites that we got. Yes, one of the ladies said she she spent fifty dollars to urinate. That's one month minimum wage. Just you understand? Yes. One month minimum wage. You know? so salary. Salary. Yeah. Salary. Uh, salary. You, salary. you understand? Just to urinate. One month just to urinate. You know, <laughs> and when once you are pressed, you are pressed. Mm -hmm. And driving from Sudan to Egypt is not that you are saying from Lagos to Ibadan. They are, most of them, their legs are all, already swollen mm. because you can't sit in the bus. The, the th problem is you can't stop. You have to keep driving and driving until you get to Egypt. We are, we are thankful that they are back, but the government has to, their processes of trying to evacuate Nigerians for war situations has to be a, 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 a proactive and faster so that Nigerians will not lose hope. Because some of them, we are even saying that, okay, fine, we are back. We thank God that we are back. Like a lady... She says she has been in Sudan for 18 years. Mm -hmm. So, and there are some of them who are back. These are students. Mm -hmm. There are some out of the 5,000 mm -hmm. who were even born in Sudan, but they are Nigerian nationals. Mm -hmm. So those ones that will be coming now, it's like they have left everything that they have in Sudan and they are coming to Nigeria. So if they are coming to Nigeria, it means that the government has to but find to, a way to help mm, them. We integrate for them. them to be able to get back to their, uh, to, to, to their lives again. Because they are leaving everything. I heard they, they gave them 100,000. No, 100 dollars. Uh, 100,000 uh, naira or whatever. 100 dollars. You know, 100 dollars. For them to go, what will they do? After, in fact, by the time anybody gets home, the 100 dollars is over. Because by the time you change it, it's gone. So they need to reintegrate these people and find a way or for, I, I don't know, like, we just Secret, have to find I, our processes right. It, I don't know, it was just going through my mind that why, why will Nigerians leave Nigeria, Nigeria and go to Sudan to study? So I found out that, oh, maybe some they go there for the purpose of um, Islamic studies and they have, um, you know, good schools and everything. Why can't we set up facilities like that in our own country? Why do we have to go to Khartoum before you get... Um, anyway, um, the world has become a global village. You can as well ask yourself, why is an American in Sudan? There are many Americans. Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. is far richer than every country in Africa. But Saudi Arabia is <laughs> in Sudan. Mm -hmm. British were there. French were there. Yes, no. South Africa were there. The number of so students that, we have in their so, universities. Yes. So it, uh, uh, that in itself, I don't know. And, of so, and that some of them will some of also them, give, give that, uh, stay there and all that. Yes. The issue we should be asking, personally, 
Why don't we have them in our own universities? Well, we used to have them. We used to have some. We have some. It's not as the number we have. Things are 5,000. 5,000 Sudanese in Nigerian universities. AY. That was the time we were having Ghanaians in Nigeria. Are you forgetting? Are you forgetting? They were here. Okay? So Ghanaians were here. So mother Africans, in fact, during at a point, we were giving scholarship to so many African countries to study in Nigeria. It's like those from the southern African countries mm. during the time of apartheid. Yeah, exactly. You remember vividly. Mm. So it is, uh, it is what it is. People will always move for greener pasture from uh, this. Some people, some people, some of them left here to go to Europe. But they couldn't find themselves in Europe. You know, through those normal routes Routes, and the rest mm, of them. Okay. They okay. decided to come back. Mm. We're talking of um, nationals. I just finished from this city university. We are regular. There are some nationals that are not Nigerians in this city university. Mm. Do you understand? The same thing in so many other universities. So that is what happens. But what I'm saying is, but I think we can be more proactive. And that is where I'm going to. As we have it now. We don't have an emergency, a response emergency squad mm -hmm. to be able to handle issues of this nature. You know why? We dropped the ball during the UK, Ukraine, Russian war. Mm -hmm. We, we didn't dropped learn the ball. Any lesson. Yes, we didn't learn any lesson. We dropped the ball during the xenophobic attacks in South Africa. We dropped the ball during the attacks in um, in Ghana. It happened in Ethiopia and so many other. What I personally would have, uh, we suggest probably to the incoming government is that we should have a unit. What our not the type of rapid response call that they have in Sudan, no. Mm -hmm. Our own idea of a rapid response call specifically tailored towards rescuing and be able to take care of our nationals outside the shores of Nigeria, so that we don't go through the bureaucracy that we are going through. Mm -hmm. Every time we are having trouble, we have to run to the president. We have to run yes, to the national exactly. assembly to look for money. So we have to start begging. Yes, I have to call uh, the was it the, the central bank a yeah. um, governor to release what they release the money. The whole money is not released. No, there should be a squad. There should be a, 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 a squad, sort of. You know okay. that once it happens, you know okay. already what to do. Let's attend to Yakub. Yakub is calling us. Thank you for staying with us, Yakub. Yeah, good evening, and then good evening to the two gentlemen. You are so good evening, sir. Uh, I, uh, it, it's unfortunate that uh, we find ourselves in this kind of mess. I call it mess. Uh, in the sense that uh, we have some other nationality in that particular country, as you rightly said earlier, the country, they stand up for them, and then they make sure that they evacuate them in time. So the question is, that uh, why is it that Nigeria always waits until the late hour before they can attempt to such things? And then by saying this, we have a minister of humanitarian account or something, and then, is it the one in charge of giving them $100 high yo? In this kind of economy we are in, in this country, somebody that has been to that for almost 15 or 13 years, left That's everything behind and then come to his country, and then you give it uh, on him, $100. Asuko, what is $100 going to do? Even without we Nigeria, we would need $100. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Somebody that's been. It's, 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 I'm not the one that gives it's just to, to. It's just for them to at least get know, back to yeah. um, transport you know, yourself. Transport or yourself or try and why, why, why are we on need? Why, why on need? Let us also try to also thank some individuals and yeah, companies that I mean, are doing Because I heard that going APC, Chief I always ask why Alex Oyema, the chairman of APC, for what he has been. This is not the first time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask, is he the only one that owns n in Nigeria? There's mm -hmm. something about that man mm -hmm. with, that, with his kind of kid. Yes, yes. That, is the thing. that is, we've had MTN is also giving them certain stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we also have um, uh, Dangote, Dangote is also yes. doing something. Mm -hmm. I think more Nigerians can also cover. But that also depends on coordination. Mm -hmm. The fact is that our government are not looking beyond the picture. It is not just about government or government. We can also bring in the private sector to partner with government. That is why I say we must have a holistic look, committee, whatever you know, that is put in place. Ayo, this is not going to be the last time we're going to have crisis. Mm. Nobody knew that Sudan would just blow up just like that. Mm. Sudan used to be, well, the problem with Sudan was used to be between the South and Sudan. Mm. And after the split, we had it. You'll be shocked that tomorrow it could be any other country. Mm, I think, I we should be able to know how to play international politics and have to be able to take care so of how, our citizens. How, do we, how do we better the lot of that 
green passports, as in our Are passports. Anywhere we take do, it to. Do you know what our foreign policy is? We don't have a foreign policy. If you ask them, because I read international law and diplomacy, and sometimes I wonder, do, not, do we have a foreign policy? We used to have. We used to have. Then it used to be about Africa. We used to have. But Africa used to be the center center piece of, our, center piece yes. of Nigeria. But now, I think it's time for us to begin to look at foreign policy from our own, then to the international world. Mm. Because by the time we do that, that green passport will have a sense yeah. of belonging. And America for America. To, yes, you remember that. that is it. America, America for America. America. So if we begin to say Nigeria for Nigeria, anybody, any weird, anybody that wants to you know, trample on any Nigerian, and we go all out and make sure that we also deal with that country, how are you all? That is when people will begin to respect the green passport. But we don't have a foreign policy. I, I'm not sure that any government even is even thinking about it. But this is a new government, this is a new administration. They should begin to think about a foreign policy them now. that will be for Nigeria and Nigeria and everywhere, anything Nigeria. Whether you are in Sudan, you are anywhere, but that green passport, as long as you have the green passport, people should be able to respect you. So it should be Nigeria first and no other country. It, it you. Okay, let me talk to Sule Yao Sule, our friend from, from Kano. Thank you for joining us, Sule. Hello, Sule. Wow. Sule, are you there? Oh, Sule. I think they're having problems. Yes, AY. Hey, we used to have the Ni Nash uh, Nigeria Institute of International Affairs. Mm, yes. We that have, we, have. I say we used to have. You say we have. When <laughs> last did you hear from NIA? They are trying to refurbish. When last did you hear from the days of Professor Okunsoya? Yeah. I think mm. that is that is name and mm. the rest of them. And one, um, the, the last uh, was yes. uh, Professor Akiteri. Akiteri, Akiteri that is it. Yes. 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 yes, yes. You remember? Mm. That's supposed to be the think tank. Of formulation of policies, Even potential George, policies. Yeah. Professor for George, policy. the late yeah. George o Obiozo. Obiozo. Yes. Mm. Mm. Those were, those, that was, but what do you have now? When our leaders want to talk, they go to that one in London. What's that one in London that everybody, remember that? Um, where, where is it? Chatham House. Chatham House. That is our own Chatham House. And Chatham House, nobody is looking at it. I know we have to have a new, and we're just saying, so we have dropped the ball so much that. Mm. We hope that, and we continue talking about the incoming government, mm -hmm. we'll be able to have a look at this thing holistically mm -hmm. so we can take us back to where we used to mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. Nigerians can be respected anywhere, anywhere. they find themselves. Yes. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. Wherever you present that passport, it should be seen as a symbol of nationality yes. and it should be respected. Chris yes. Kendewandu, I want to thank you for your contribution. Thank you very and much for having me. Thank, thank you for you your so contribution. Much.